So, in the previous lecture, we had we had ended the previous lecture with this exercise. So, let us just do this exercise. So, what do we have? Let us make a picture of this. So, let us say we have R n. So, this in, in our case, let us just take R 2 and we fix this point A comma B and we want to show that the complement of this point. So, we are leaving out this point. So, we want to show that the complement is an open subset, right. So, let us just take any point x comma y, right and uh, then, so, okay, so how will we prove this? So, let x bar x m in R f be in the complement of this point. Right? What this simply means is that x bar is not equal to a bar, which implies that there is some i such that x i is not equal to a bar. Right? So, let epsilon be the absolute value of x i minus a i, right, then this is positive, yeah. So, we claim that uh, s epsilon by 2 of x is completely contained inside r n minus this a 1 up to a n. Right. So, in other words, we are taking this distance epsilon, this is epsilon and we are taking a square, let us just to be safe, let us just take epsilon by 4, right. So, we are taking this s epsilon to the by 4 around this point x comma y, okay. So, let us prove this. So, suppose uh, if y equal to y 1 up to y m belongs to s epsilon by 4 x. So, then this implies that mod x i minus y i is strictly less than epsilon by 4, right. But then uh, this implies that uh, yeah, so this implies that y i it cannot be equal to a i, right, because x i minus a i is equal to epsilon. So, therefore, this implies that yeah, y belongs to R n minus A 1 up to A n, right. So, this proves that this thing uh, inside in the complement, given any point in the complement, we have found a basic open subset which contains that point and it is completely contained inside the complement. So, therefore, the complement is open. So, this implies that. Uh, oops, I am sorry, uh, is an open subset, is an open subset. Yeah. So, this implies that R n minus A is an open subset, which implies by the definition of closed subset, a singleton is a closed subset. Okay, so with this, let us begin the next lecture. So, in this lecture, we will define the closure of a subset. Yeah. So, let us first write the definition and then we will see what this means by means of some example. So, let A containing X be a subset, okay. So, it, it can be any subset, it does not have to be open or closed, yeah. So, the closure of A is defined as follows. Okay. 
so a closure is equal to those points in x such that for every open set or rather if u is an open set u is an open set containing x then u meets a u intersection a is non empty okay let's try to understand this by means of an example so the simplest examples are on the real line so let's take the real line with the standard topology yeah and we can take the interval 0 1 let us take this interval 0 1 and let us see what its closure is. So, uh, suppose we take any x which is not 0 or 1 let us say x is strictly less than 0. So, then we can find a small neighborhood around x which does not meet this interval a. So, a is equal to this open interval 0 1 right. Similarly, if we take any so, this implies that, uh, so this implies that if x is strictly less than 0, then x does not belong to A closure, yeah, because the closure requires that every neighborhood, every open subset which contains x should meet our set A, right. And similarly, if I take any x which is strictly greater than 1, then also we can find some uh, epsilon small enough such that uh, the epsilon neighborhood does not meet A. So, once again this implies that if x is strictly greater than 1, then x does not belong to A closure. Okay. And uh, let us make a remark, uh, maybe I should have made the remark here itself. Remark. it is completely obvious or it is clear that a, clo a is contained in a closure okay so let me just uh, highlight that remark okay so therefore uh, a closure so in, our, in in this example so in this example a is contained in a closure and a closure has to be contained in this closed interval 0 1 right that's what we have seen because if we take anything which is strictly less than 0 then it's not in the closure if if we take anything which is strictly greater than 1 then also it's not in the closure the only possible uh, points which are which could be in the closure are 0 and 1 so let's see if they satisfy the definition of a closure of being in the closure. So, if we take 0 then no matter which neighborhood of 0 we take if we take any open subset. So, if u is an open subset which contains 0 right then by the definition of the topology then there exists an epsilon positive such that d epsilon 0 the ball of neighborhood uh, radius 0 uh, epsilon around 0 is contained in u right. But clearly uh, epsilon by 2 belongs to this ball and epsilon by 2 is contained in 0 1 right. So, this implies that u intersection a is non empty. So, therefore, 0 is contained in A closure and similarly one can check easily that 1 is contained in A closure, right. So, therefore, A closure in this case is precisely the closed interval 0 1, okay. uh, We can give a slightly more complicated example. So, let us give an example in R 2.
So, we can take this region right. So, this region is A is equal to those x comma y in R 2 says that x square plus y square is strictly less than 1. Yeah. And uh, I will not write the details, but you can check that if we take any point x comma y a comma b let us say says that a square plus b square is strictly greater than 1, then we can find a small neighborhood uh, which does not meet a. Yeah. Then there exists epsilon positive such that S epsilon a comma b intersection a is empty, right? And similarly, uh, we can check that if a square plus b square is equal to one, then for every epsilon, S epsilon a comma b intersection a is non-empty. Right. So, this will show that a closure is exactly the set x comma y in R2 such that x square plus y square is less than or equal to 1. Yeah. Note that a is obviously contained in a closure. So, a closure is just adding the boundary, this boundary circle to a. Okay, so, as we proceed, we will uh, get more familiarized with this notion. So, for now, let us prove a lemma. So, although we will write a proof, it is good to keep a picture in mind while we prove these statements. So, let a contain in x, uh, like for instance a picture in R2 will be good enough, be a subset, then a closure is closed in A, is closed in x. So, that is why the word, so this justifies the name closure. So, let us prove this. Uh, so, it suffices to show that x minus a closure is open. Right? The definition of a closed subset was the complement should be open. So, that is what we are going to show that the complement is open. So, let us pick, so let x be an element in x minus a closure, right. So, that is what this means that x does not belong to a closure, but then by the definition, so then by definition there exists an open set u containing x. u contains x or which contains x which contains x and u intersection a is empty right but uh, it follows that if y is any point in u, right. So, then y has an open subset, uh, which is u itself, which does not meet a, yeah. Then y has an open subset, namely u, which does not meet a. Right. 
So, thus y is not contained in A closure. Right. So, therefore, we have proved that. So, this implies that u is completely contained inside x minus A closure. Right. So, uh, thus for every x, x in x minus A closure, we have found uh, an open set u sub x which is which contains x and u sub x is contained in x minus a closure right so and so therefore so this implies that this x minus a closure we can write it as union x minus a closure is u sub x Right. And each of these is open, and an arbitrary union of open sets is open. So this implies that x minus a closure is open. Okay. So using so yeah. So roughly this says that if we take any point here, we can find this small neighborhood, which does not uh, meet the closure. And similarly, if we take any point here. And the complement, which is this open region in red, is open. Okay, so let us prove this proposition, the next proposition. Let us use this lemma to prove the next proposition. Uh, a set A is closed. If and only if A is equal to A bar, yeah, or A closure. Right. So let us prove this. So recall, let's just def recall the definition of this A bar. So x is an A bar if it has the property that given any open subset u which contains x, it should meet A. Uh, so let's prove this. So let us assume first assume that A is closed. Right. So we need to show that. A is equal to A closure. Okay. So, since A is contained in A closure, we already know this is obvious. We had observed this in the remark which followed the definition. It is it is enough to show that A closure is contained in B. So, taking complements, so to show, prove this, to show this, it suffices to show that x minus a closure contains x minus a. And which is what we are going to prove. Okay, so let us take let x belong to x minus a. Right. So as a is closed, it follows from the definition that uh, x minus this implies x minus a is open. Yeah, so let us denote this open subset by u. Uh, so then, uh, so thus, 
there is an open subset. namely u which contains x and such that u intersection a is empty right u is defined to be the complement of a so therefore u intersection a is empty right so thus x does not belong to a closure a bar, if you like, yeah, by the definition of this A closure, yeah. So this implies that x belongs to x minus A. So thus we have proved that uh, we have proved this, and therefore we have proved this, right? Okay. So this implies that A is equal to A bar. That proves one direction of the proposition. So for the other kind. Uh, so next let us assume that A is equal to A bar, right. So then by the previous lemma, so what did the previous lemma say? The previous lemma said that A bar is closed in X, right. A bar is closed in X, right? And since uh, A is equal to A bar, so thus A is closed in X. Which is exactly what we wanted to prove, right? We wanted to show that A is closed, right? So this completes the proof of the proposition. So as a corollary, as an easy corollary, yeah. so let B be a subset of X, yeah. so uh, then B closure, closure, yeah. so closure of B closure is equal to B closure. So if we take closure, then taking closure again makes no difference. So let's see how to prove this. So proof. Right. So from the lemma, so the lemma says that this lemma over here, it says that no matter no matter which subset we take, the closure is always close in X. So applying this lemma, from the lemma, we get that B closure is a closed subset, right? And uh, this proposition, yeah, the above proposition, uh, says that B closure is closed implies B closure is equal to B closure closure implies that B closure is equal to B closure closure. Yeah. So applying the the previous proposition. by taking A is equal to B. Okay. So uh, we will end this lecture by with two exercises, with two easy exercises. So let A contained in B be subsets. then A closure is contained inside B closure. That is the first exercise. And the second sec exercise is, 
So let z contained in x be a closed subspace. and let a be a subset of x which is contained in z yeah so then a closure is contained in z okay so let me make a remark the so exercise 2 says that a closure is exercise 2 and the above lemma imply that a closure is the smallest closed subset. containing A. So, we will end here.